the one meal a day diet. It may sound very easy and simple. You just eat once a day and you fast for the rest of the day. But as it turns out, people can still mess it up and make a whole lot of mistakes. You had one job. Just the one. Before you carry on, watch this video about the seven biggest OMAD mistakes. One, eating too close to bedtime. Most people who are doing intermittent fasting, they skip breakfast, have lunch or dinner, and they tend to backload most of the calories into the later parts of the day. In my opinion, it doesn't really matter when you consume your food, as long as you couple it with proper training and you don't overconsume calories. Some research shows that early time restricted feeding between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. improves 24 hour glucose levels, alters lipid metabolism, and circadian clock gene expression. However, that study was compared to a non fasting group eating between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Of course, early time restricted feeding is better because it's actually going into a fast state, whereas the control group isn't even intermittent fasting. An 8-hour time restricted feeding window between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. has also been shown to reduce blood pressure, lower body fatness, and improve cholesterol profile. The actual benefits of intermittent fasting and time restricted eating come from a suppressed eating window. And if your eating window is actually smaller and you consume it later in the day, then it's still better than having a huge and a really wide eating window and having it earlier in the day, if that makes sense. The eating frequency is still the most important part, regardless of when you consume it. But eating too close to bedtime will interfere with sleep quality and it may also interrupt your digestion and autophagy process, growth hormone release, everything else. So optimally, you want to stop eating at least four to five hours before going to bed. Number two, eating too many calories. It is pretty easy to lose weight with OMAD because it's such a small time frame where you can mess things up and you tend to be more satiated from fewer calories. But in order to lose weight, then you still need to induce a caloric deficit. There's no way around that. Disappoint! You can definitely gain weight on OMAD quite easily if you're not paying attention to your calories. It's not necessary to count every gram and macro you consume, but you do want to look at how many calories you're actually eating. Number three, eating empty calories. Another mistake would be to eat those empty calories that don't have a significant benefit on your body. I'm talking about processed food and even healthy junk food. When doing any form of intermittent fasting, especially OMAD, you have to focus more on nutrient-dense foods because you're eating at a lower frequency and within a smaller time frame. You have to make sure you do get all of your essential nutrients, vitamins, minerals, and macros within that time frame. If your eating frequency is lower in the example of eating one meal a day or doing any form of intermittent fasting, then the nutrient density of those individual meals has to be higher as to avoid malnourishment and as to ensure that you get your nutrients. At the same time, filling yourself up with lettuce and bok choy to minimize caloric content can also make you more bloated and too full. So in that case, Lettuce is empty calories. Number four, too much cardio fasted. The point of this mistake isn't whether or not you should work out fasted or not. Working out fasted is perfectly fine and it's gonna show great results for most people. It's just that doing too much cardio as your main form of exercise will not give you the body composition and the results that you want. Someone focusing on resistance training and lean muscle growth will see much better results in fat loss than someone focusing on cardio. With cardio, you're not really stimulating muscle hypertrophy, which is the most important part for burning fat and building muscle. Number five, under eating protein. Because OMAD is such a small time frame, you have to make sure that you get adequate amounts of protein amino acids because that's going to protect against muscle catabolism during the fasted window. It's thought that your body can absorb only 30 to 40 grams of protein per meal and everything else gets wasted away. However, that's based on the idea that you only need about 20 to 40 grams of protein to maximize muscle protein synthesis. Your body will absorb all the protein you consume. It's just going to downregulate the speed at which it absorbs it. And it's just going to take longer for you to get all of that protein. So regardless of eating OMAD, you can still eat most of your protein in one sitting and you're going to absorb all of it. Optimal ranges are between 0.7 to 1.2 grams per pound of lean body mass. If you're not exercising, then you can safely stick to 0.6 to 0.7 grams. But if you're working out, you should stick to 0.8 to 1.0 grams. And that's per pound of lean body mass, not fat mass. 48% body fat. Number six, BCAs while fasting. The biggest reason people take BCAs is that they want to protect against muscle catabolism. 
and they're afraid of going catabolic during the fasted state. But BCAs are generally worthless as long as you're getting adequate amounts of protein and you're not starving yourself. To avoid muscle loss with OMAD, you should become more fat adapted. Being in ketosis is more muscle sparing than fasting on a glucose based metabolism because ketones are muscle sparing. To become fat adapted, then you don't need to be eating a strict ketogenic diet as long as you're already doing intermittent fasting. But it's a good idea to pay more attention to how many carbs you're eating, how many carbs your body needs and to not excessively overspill yourself with glucose. BCAs while OMAD may actually make you lose more muscle because they'll interfere with autophagy and potentially kick you out of ketosis. Number 7. Getting weaker in training Doing resistance training and trying to build muscle is as important on OMAD as on any other diet. It's actually very beneficial for general longevity and metabolic health as well. If you're progressively getting weaker or losing muscle on OMAD, then it's not really worth it. Here's what to do to not lose muscle on OMAD. First, become keto adapted. Second, higher protein intake. Third, focus on strength training. Four, minimize unnecessary cardio. Five, don't do crazy high intensity cardio. Six, sleep properly. Seven, avoid overtraining and have adequate rest days. Eight, try to extend your eating window every once in a while. And nine, have some protein before you work out. It's possible to build muscle and strength with intermittent fasting and even OMAD. You just have to look at your results and adjust your approach based on that. The last bonus mistake I'm about to share with you is being too strict with OMAD. Like I said, sometimes it's better to extend your eating window and not eat only one meal a day because your body is going to adapt and in order to recover properly, then you actually need to nourish yourself. I myself have been doing some form of an OMAD diet for three to four years where I consume my food within two to three hours and sometimes on other days I'll just increase my eating window and I'll eat within 3 to 6 hours instead. If you want to know how to optimize the 1 meal a day diet with other intermittent fasting schedules and techniques for both muscle growth, fat loss and longevity, then check out my book Metabolic Autophagy. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click like, subscribe, notification bell. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered. You had one job.